All right, everyone, we have the very first post Iowa poll, uh, which is from New Hampshire specifically, link in the description. I don't archive this because it's a rolling aggregate from RCP. Uh, and also RCP does and always play well with archive.today. It can be a little bit hit or miss, the article by article and polling page by polling page, and I'm not 100% sure why. This shows a jump for Trump, Trump jumping up to 50. Um, if he is indeed at that level, he will win New Hampshire. Um, because with the rest of the vote split and with some undecided voters presumptively choosing him at the last hour, uh, he'd be some, he'd probably be around where he was in Iowa. The only difference is that now you got a more compacted field. By the way, Haley getting a bit of a boost there too. The presumption is that most of Christie's voters flocked to her. Some of them went to Trump and Trump seems to be slowly starving Ron DeSantis at the moment. Of course, Ramaswamy endorsing Trump, Bergam endorsing Trump. Uh, DeSantis swears that he'll still be in the race, and if he did drop out, I would expect he would endorse Trump too, because the writing's basically on the wall. If you look at the betting odds, Trump is riding high there for a reason uh, in the state of New Hampshire. If he does win in New Hampshire, and this is only one poll, we're going to wait for more of them over the coming days. We do need a scatter shot as opposed to a single poll. Never trust single polls, although Boston Globe is fairly reliable and accurate generally. It could be an outlier. Um, we're going to get more polls, but right now, I would expect Trump to win there. And if he does, he runs the deck. There's no other competitive state. The only state in which things seem slightly competitive is New Hampshire. If Haley does not win there, you can look to her to drop out probably. She may or may not endorse Trump, by the way. DeSantis will probably drop. He's not going to remain in the race through Super Tuesday. Again, the writing is on the wall. He's going to come in a distant third in New Hampshire. Um, although, again, like with Iowa, he may get a last-minute boost. Um, he's, he's in the single digits there. You can't really weather that loss. Um, with the first state, you put all of your eggs in that basket. You did manage to get a boost at the end, which I predicted would happen. In fact, a six and a half point boost for DeSantis in the final result. Uh, I mean, five and a half point boost, uh, so significant, giving him the second place finish narrowly over Nikki Haley. Uh, but he can't count on as big a boost in New Hampshire. He's too far back to take second. Um, having, you know, blew it in, in the state you were targeting, and then you're going into the second state, the first primary, and you're going to get crippled. Um, I, I would say DeSantis is probably out right after New Hampshire. Um, then Trump is free to run the field. Effectively, the primaries will be over. Both of his viable opponents may drive, I mean, Hutchinson's out for what little it's worth. That's it. That's a wrap. It'll be over by New Hampshire, assuming that Trump wins. If not, it'll be over on Super Tuesday. Or possibly a bit before if Nikki Haley truly gets crushed in South Carolina. By the way, Nevada is going to be wonky this year because you have a caucus and a primary going on in the state. The state-sanctioned primary is the one that matters, where the caucus, I mean, or is it the state-sanctioned caucus? One or the other, can't remember. Um, whereas in the other, like uh, Trump and, and uh, others aren't even on the ballot. It's like Mike Pence was mysteriously on it, etc. But that one's not being sanctioned by the GOPs uh, at the state level. And so they're going with the other contest. So there will literally be two political contests in Nevada this year. It'll be a little bit interesting. Could lead to some confusion. Well, which, uh, which one am I going to? The caucus, the primary? I can't fucking remember. Shit, this ballot doesn't have my candidate on it. It's a bunch of also-rans. And then Mike Pence, which is hilarious. Mike Pence wins the uh, Nevada primary. We He doesn't get any delegates. It doesn't matter, and he already dropped out. But he could very well, because he's the only one with name recognition that I saw on the ballots that people were showing me. It's entirely possible. I would say 90% chance Trump wins in New Hampshire. Um, again, I'll, I'll wait for more polling. I need at least like three polls to aggregate beforehand. But there's never been a poll that shows Haley ahead of him. He, in the aggregate, is up near 50. He's in the mid-40s already. He just got several prominent endorsements, um, notably Ramaswamy. And by the way, and again, this is just a single poll, so this is just statistical noise. But just for, for interesting shits and giggles, Ramaswamy was at six in the aggregate. And indeed, if I add that to the former RCP average, you get the Boston Globe's poll result of 50. It's literally the same exact number over the uh, WHDH TV Emerson poll that was conducted right before the Iowa caucus. I think that he's getting a Ramaswamy boost. Um, and if Ramaswamy goes and does the surrogate thing in New Hampshire, I think that clinches it. I would expect Trump 
to win with about 50. I think that's reasonable. Haley will probably come in a bit below 40. Uh, DeSantis will get a little bit of a boost at the end. And then you'll have people who voted for Mickey Mouse and shit like that, uh, uh, etc. I would also like to point out that one of the reasons why Nikki Haley has outsized support there is because the Democratic Party has literally launched an effort to try to get people to take a GOP ballot. Instead of bothering to take part in the New Hampshire uh, primary for the Dems, which is basically a non-entity for political purposes. It's not going to award any delegates because they stood on principle. And when they were snubbed by the DNC over uh, the South Carolina issue, they decided to jump that to the fore. <clears throat> because that's a non-entity, and Biden's going to win on a write-in campaign, although he might not clinch 50 as a write-in, which would look kind of bad for him. It would, it would show the enthusiasm gap between the two respective prospective nominees, let's put it that way. Uh, they're trying to get Democrats and independents registered as Republicans to vote for Nikki Haley in that primary. Historically speaking, you don't get a lot of poll movement when that happens. They, remember, there were shenanigans in 2016 with Democrats split on whether to vote in favor of or against Trump. Some were like, God, he's batshit, he's dangerous, we're going to organize against him. And some were like, no, no, he's going to be easy to beat. Hillary Clinton will chew him up and spit him out because he's a blowhard. Let's vote for Trump in the primaries. There were some shenanigans, but how much did that move anything in the polls? Maybe a couple of points? couple of points ain't going to do it for Nikki Haley. Most Democrats are not going to take a GOP ballot. In the end, Trump wins, I think. Uh, Haley comes in a fairly strong second. She might stay in after that. DeSantis probably drops. I mean, he doesn't want to come in third in South Carolina. I, I just don't think that, that he's going to continue. Despite the bravado, I think he's intelligent enough to drop before Super Tuesday at least. Haley might not be so intelligent. She might be crazy enough to stay in for her own home state and get crushed by 35, 40 points at that point. And if DeSantis does drop out and endorse Trump, we'll declare the race officially over. In fact, this is kind of bad for me. I'm rooting for Trump to win, of course, myself. I'm, I'm, I'm MAGA. Uh, I'm on the Trump train. As a commentator and as a content creator, though, what am I supposed to fucking do for the live streams? I wanted to do Super Tuesday. It might be an empty field. I'll we'll have to look at the uh, Democratic Party results. So, I mean, I'll still stream, but I don't know if I'm gonna, if there's nobody else in the race, I'm not going to be able to justify South Carolina. I'll make a video about the results the next day and talk about how Nikki Haley got humiliated before her own home state even voted. Super Tuesday, I'll be able to rant about the results in Florida, where Ron DeSantis is already down by 30, 35 points. After that, though, I don't know. There's not going to be anything interesting unless we, I don't even know if we're going to have presidential debates this year. Uh, we're not even, we've got a lot of up-in-the-air questions. Uh, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more messiness, actually, but with Trump riding right at the aggregate and Haley managing to come in third in Iowa, I see the writing on the wall, and I think a lot of other people do. I mean, I saw it months ago, but you know, some people did or didn't. Um, what the hell am I supposed to talk about? It sucks to be a political commentator right now. I'm glad that Trump is knocking it out of the park, but come on. I gotta have a little bit more meat on those bones. I'm hoping he returns to mean tweeting or something like that. Then I'll have something funny to say. That's about all. Peace out.